maybe I'll even try to get this up on like YouTube or something. So we say, hi, everyone. Here's the simple three minute way to create a chaos cache explosion thing that is cached and plays back. Real eloquent, Alex. Good job. We're going to create a sphere. We got a sphere. We're going to put it way up high and then we're going to go to fracture. And then we're going to say new because we have to create a geometry collection. Don't ask why. That's just the thing that is able to fracture. And so we do that. And we're going to let it name it whatever it wants to be in whatever folder it wants. Although that's weird. It's doing it in the engine folder. Why is it doing it in the engine folder? Oh, I know, because the sphere lives in the engine folder. I'm adding a bunch of stuff to the engine folder that shouldn't live there. Don't do that. Don't be like Alex. Uh, I'm going to put it in my content folder. Boop. Okay. So we know it's a geometry collection because now it's real sad about its material properties. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go and have it fracture in a clustered way. And we'll leave all the defaults. And we say fracture. And if we want to see if it actually fractured, we can slide the explosion amount up and down. And we can see all the pieces. And we could color it by level and do all sorts of fun things like that. And let me save this level because things might crash. Chaos, fracture, cache. All right, so at our core, I can simulate and I can see, oh, it's only doing a little tiny fracture and then rolling around. Uh, so a couple different ways we can change that damage threshold. One is scrolling down to damage threshold and changing these numbers. So for example, if I removed a couple zero places from each of these for the damage thresholds, this would be one way. And now it cracks a little bit more, makes a bit of a pile. Uh, or I can ignore this entirely and do size specific damage threshold. You'll notice this all grays out now. Simulate, boom. Oh, I like that one. I like how it like, yeah, it's rolling and tumbling apart as it's coming apart. So you might be saying, but Alex, I'm making a little mobile game for the iPhone 6. And how can I possibly get this cool fracturing ball to work uh, on the iPhone 6? And the answer is you probably can't. But if you really wanted to try, uh, you would want to use chaos caching. And so the way we're going to do that is get an asset called a chaos cache manager, which I've recently placed. So I see it there. But if you don't, you can type in chaos cache manager and that will live in your scene as the dragon from Unreal Engine 1. Uh, and once we have that there, we just need to set up the basic recording functions here. So we need something here. We need a cache collection. That's the one I made before. Ignore it. We're going to create a new one right here. Uh, ball cache collection. <laughs> Real creative names. And make sure it's not in your engine folder. I'll hit save. And uh, we'll leave all this at the default. I think we don't actually need to do anything in here. I think it does this on its own, but maybe you can manually add in these things if you uh, want to later. The only thing I think we need to do here is add in the observed components. So we had a plus there. And then this doesn't look like a dropdown. It is a dropdown. I think it's telling us we can do actors and components, or it's looking for a component inside of an actor. So then we need to find the geometry collection component inside the sphere. Boop, grab that there. And now we've got this as set to record. We know it's going to come apart. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit simulate and it should just start recording it. Let's find out. Bonk. All right. So that looked pretty good. And if I'm happy with that take, I can hit stop. And you might say, OK, how do we know if it actually recorded? Well, let's change the drop down from record to play. And we don't even need to press play or simulate or anything like that. We can just scrub through here. And if it recorded, we should be seeing stuff, but we don't. So perhaps uh, it did not record unless I need to simulate again or something like that. No, something happened because it's definitely, um, it's definitely, it's not moving this anymore, but it's unhappy about something. What did I forget? Maybe I did need to add something into here. No, it actually, it added the cache on its own. So yeah, it recorded for six seconds and it's got all the stuff here. So this all auto-populated which is cool, um, but when I scrub, it's not getting any of it. Let's just try it again for funsies. Um, cash name, does that need a name? Test, maybe, is simulating. Let's try record one more time. Record, time mode, zero. We're observing all the things. All the things are observed. Go ahead and hit simulate. Boom. 
Recording, 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 and stop. Okay, now play, and now play. Okay, uh, is it doing it? Was that the same one? There we go. Okay, I don't know why it didn't work the first time, but I did literally the same thing twice. The only thing I changed was I gave the cache a name. Maybe you just have to give it a name. And there we have our recording. And if we want to, feels like a dance party or something. Kind of like a spider. Got like all these legs coming out. If we wanted this to play back in sequencer, that's pretty easy too. We can do add level sequencer and we're going to say ball cache chaos fun thing for you. And we open that and then we drag in our chaos cache manager into here. And the only thing we actually need, and we could probably convert this to spawnable if we wanted this to work anywhere, instead of just in this particular map, maybe we want this to be able to pop up anywhere. And the only thing we actually need is that start time component. And so if we want to make sure that we're seeing this as time, show time as seconds, and then I can go ahead and make the start time zero, and then the end time five, or however long I actually was recording for. And now it's just going to play back right there in sequencer. Boop. Right? And if I want to go backwards or change the speed or whatever, I can do all sorts of fun things. And it can go because it's cached. None of this is using real time physics simulation or anything. Um, I really do want to just make a dance party now with like a hundred of these on the dance floor. Drop the beep. But that's it. That's the short version of getting Chaos Cache Manager and all the fun related things to it up and running as quick as possible. No fuss, no muss. Just one big mistake in the middle where I forgot to name it. The end. <laughs>